guys, welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here, and today we're going to be talking about the 2020 presidential election and talk about the economist forecast and looking at what they're projecting and what they're predicting for the 2020 presidential election. So before we get started and analyze the economist forecast, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. So let's get started. So at this point in time, the Economist forecast is probably one of the more famous ones out there. They're doing a lot of um, advertising with this one. Like if you go on Google and you search up any 2020 forecast, most likely the Economist will be the first one that will pop up. So this forecast, for those of you that don't know, the Economist is more of a left-leaning, I guess, media organization. You know how there's like media biases. Um these days. They lean a little bit more towards Biden. However, that does not mean that the data they're giving us is false. So we're going to look at all the data they do have. So they have percentages, maps, and chances of winning, all of that. We're going to take that into account. So let's get started. So currently they project Joe Biden actually to have a 85% chance of victory on um, winning the electoral college or winning 270 electoral votes or more to win the election. This is about a six in seven chance. Pretty solid chances for Joe Biden. There's only very specific scenarios where Donald Trump can win, according to this forecast. And I would say that Donald Trump's chances, I would say, are somewhat higher, but not astronomically. And again, 15% is 15%. It's a chance. And here's one thing you guys must understand about forecast. When it comes to percent chances of winning... Um, the higher it gets, I mean, the better, like, and always, like, if you have a high percentage in anything, usually it means for the best. However, right now, um, during this map, I think a lot of people would say 85% Donald Trump does not have a chance. Well, I mean, 15% is quite a larger um, number, I guess, when it comes to percent chance. However, 85% chance is a very strong number for Joe Biden, where if this same forecast, which... In other forecasts, it was a little different, but here when Donald Trump was doing somewhat, I guess, reasonably good during the beginning of the pandemic, where people actually approved of him for quite a while, and we didn't see him fall until it was um, BLM that really took Trump with him, um, like all that, that bad press, I guess, took him down in a lot of states, and that's when the forecast got bad, so Donald Trump is starting to make a slow recovery, however, a slow recovery at this point is probably what he has to do. There is no way for him to like absolutely ransack the rest of the states are currently like somewhat close because he's going to have to pull off something like we've never seen before. And a 50, like a 15% chance of victory. Again, not terrible. However, it's not ideal. When it comes to chances of winning the popular vote, I mean, Joe Biden's almost statistically guaranteed Again, almost statistically guaranteed. Again, realistically, Donald Trump still does have a chance to carry the popular vote. But statistically, Joe Biden is heavily favored to win the popular vote. About a 97% chance of winning they give Joe Biden. That's a very big number for him again. Um, popular vote usually is, is not that close as the Electoral College uh, in some aspects, however you look at it. However, I mean, 97% chance is a pretty good number. And... In worst versus best case scenarios, we can see them here for both parties. They project that in a worst case scenario for Joe Biden, he gets around 209 electoral votes. And the best case, 421. And then for Donald Trump, it would be reciprocals of the other two to get to 530 or 430, 538, which would give us uh, 117 worst case for Trump, 329 worst case or best case for Trump. So we're seeing a big gap in the numbers. Worst case scenario for Biden. He's doing pretty well for a worst case scenario. And best case scenario for Trump is not going to be anything astronomical. He's not going to carry um, states like Illinois, New York. That's completely out of the question. So those numbers are important to keep in mind as we keep on analyzing this forecast. Just because they have some other things that are really impactful on this. And we're going to be able to see the, the graphs. Which show, um, show us essentially that... The, the the election over time. So we're going to start by looking at the chance of winning graph, which shows us that at the beginning of election season, um, right before the pandemic hit. So generally speaking, the, the country locked down like the week from March 13th to March 21st. I mean, 
Donald Trump wasn't doing astronomically well at that point. I mean, but 20% chance of victory or 40% chance of victory is a lot higher than they gave him in 2016. And again, pretty solid number. The pandemic started to hit and rise. That was a very big, um, I guess, drop for Biden. Then came Black Lives Matter around here, where he was still performing pretty bad. But that took him down all the way down to his um, lowest point, which was 10%. So again, there was a point in time, like mid-July, and I think honestly, he, he averaged about 10%. He went, I think, up to 9% um, August 8th. At that point, that was when he was doing very bad, I guess, um, Donald Trump at least, when it comes to the forecast. He ended up just coming up a little bit. He peaked at 17%. According to this, he's at 15%, which it is true. And I think honestly, at this point, Donald Trump's resurgences in the polls and in the forecast, they're not guaranteed. But considering we have some debates coming up, like, right here, right here, and then, like, throughout October, those things might swing the election, especially the presidential debate. I'm not going to get into that topic in this video, however. I would expect Donald Trump's numbers to at least rise to what they were about, um, I guess, mid-May, I guess. Mid-May, before the election. And from there, it's going to be kind of luck, I guess. Because, I mean, realistically, luck doesn't happen, but... Events that affect campaigns do. October surprise, at this point, we don't know what's going to be. I don't know if we already had it, considering that this year has been so insane. So that's something we're going to have to see. And just looking here at the graph, we can tell it's been downhill for Trump. He's trying to recover, which I mean, he slowly but steadily has recovered, or is starting to. We saw him do very bad during these summer months. But again, he's going back up. And this is how we see a lot of these races. I mean, but this race is different, I guess. A lot of races, the race is pretty close at first when you start getting a lot more polling data, everything's more concrete. After a couple of days, one party goes downhill, the other one rises to the top. And then, then there's, like, I guess, a waffling October and like late September where everything changes so quickly. And honestly, the true perspective of the election, we're going to start getting it. I mean, within the next two weeks, Voters are going to start sending in ballots as early as next week. They're going to start voting, which, again, this makes these next two or three weeks of the election extremely crucial. Because at the end of the day, independents are probably going to, like, split half and half voting in person or by mail. And essentially, if you're voting by mail, you're voting a lot earlier. So I guess, like, that's a little bit of a flaw of the mail-in system that... Something crazy might happen after the fact, after a lot of the ballots have been sent in, but essentially because they were sent in, and that's already what it is. So I think, honestly, if Biden is, like, falls, I mean, I think, honestly, the since a lot of mail-in ballots might be in in some states, again, some people are waiting until, like, mid-October to fill them out and send them in. Um, However, it's going to be crucial the first debate. More than ever, because usually you would say, well, the, the the last debate is the most crucial. It's the closest to election day. But for many people, election day is mid-October. So that's something else to note. So when looking at the forecast within the next couple of weeks, we must take into account that. Now, looking at the electoral votes and how they look at right now, the they, they say that it, it's not that likely for Trump to win. Anything in red is completely likely. It's a lot more likely. So right now they have the scenario at 334 to 204, which I know this scenario. This scenario is Donald Trump, I think if I'm correct, wins um, in all his four major Republican states. Um, and Biden wins um, Arizona, the Mitt Rush Belt, and then Florida and North Carolina. That's a pretty good map, I guess, for Biden at this point. And I think he might be able to do that. And I think, honestly, a very likely electoral scenario I would say that Donald Trump at this point, he he's probably like a little bit over. I think he's winning in Florida and North Carolina. Just looking at some recent polls amongst Latinos in Florida, just a lot of excitement in North Carolina. And of course, excitement is not all the part of the election. That is definitely a fact. However, it's definitely a factor. So if you if I put my analysis on it, which this is not what the video is, but um, I would say this line probably falls a little bit more up for Biden or for Trump at least during these last couple of days in election. So I think, honestly, at this point, we're seeing pretty much a same graph, similar graph, when it comes... It's not going to be as drastic of a change, but it went from being insanely tight to 30 electoral votes to... There was a point it was over 
almost 70 electoral votes, which substantial margin, guys. So those are like the projections they have with the electoral college chances of winning. Here they did a um um 20,000 simulations or more or less because there's 20,000 possible paths to the presidency. So they took all of that into account and ran simulations. And this is the result. So the, the higher like little tally is, it means that the, the more likely it is. One thing we can tell already is that Democrats not only have more tallies on their side, but there's some of them that are 10, not 10 times higher, but probably 10 times higher than some of the Republican ones. Um, and I think honestly, that might be a problem for the Republicans because yes, they do have some races that are winning. And one, it's everything super narrow. For the Republicans, like, there's a couple scenarios where they could win. But, again, it's it's very interesting to see. So, there's a lot more blue on this graph. And as we see the number of the, the Democrats' support go up, honestly, and we're seeing some big numbers, like 320 about electoral votes, and then we see some spikes towards the 400 marks. That means that the Democrats have a high chance of winning the election. And it's not only winning, but... Carrying some, carrying it by a substantial margin. I would say, like, the if you look at this thing, um, or at this graph, I guess the median falls around 340, 350 electoral votes. About, um, if you look at it for the Democrats, so that's a very good number for them. For the Republicans, it's it looks a little bit tougher, I guess. You have like it's kind of almost all even, like I guess, but you could say like they're currently if they do win. It's probably going to be more of a very narrow victory rather than a larger margin. So that's something very interesting to take into account that running simulations, you're, you're guaranteed to get the actual results once if you run so many simulations, because this is what the economist does. So looking at the percent chances of winning, this makes sense because Donald Trump has very low chances and pathways to the presidency. Having low pathways or very small pathways to the presidency does not mean that you don't have pathways, because you certainly do. However, Joe Biden has um, an advantage that he can diversify the map. He could just say today, I don't want to go for the Rust Belt anymore. I just want to focus on the Sun Belt. He could do that. Of course, focus everywhere, which I think, honestly, that's one of the flaws we're seeing from the um, Biden campaign. He's focusing solely on the Sun Belt or Rust Belt. That's why he's um he's not putting any more eggs in the Latino basket I think he might have learned a lesson from 2016, but I mean, not forget about Hispanic community because in Florida, for example, the Hispanic support for Trump has skyrocketed. So now we're going to look at the state maps or what about are the chances of X person winning in this state? So overall, this map is not that surprising. According to The Economist, three closest states, Arizona, the state of Georgia, and the state of North Carolina. So uh, there's some other calls I would say I would I would put Florida more in the in like at least in the super white column like this one where it's undecided because I think the body the numbers in Florida right now don't look too great for Biden especially amongst Hispanics which are crucial for a Biden victory so just basing it off of this map Joe Biden is performingly he's performing very well in the Midwest no doubt about it. He is going through, he's appealing to those voters. Again, we're seeing a lot more white on the Sun Belt because, again, these are areas where if Joe Biden focused, he could probably be winning right now by two to three points. Substantial margin. And honestly, where else is the election close? At this point, they just expect it to be Florida, Texas, Arizona, um, North Carolina, Ohio, Ohio, that's it. There's not much right now which are is extremely close. Right now, the closest state in the um, Rust Belt is definitely the state of Pennsylvania. And Donald Trump has been campaigning here, and Biden has as well. So this, this election, for example, in Pennsylvania will come down to the voters in western Pennsylvania. They're truly going to be the ones calling the shot in the state. And honestly, th that's one of the states that decides the election. If Biden doesn't win um, Pennsylvania or Florida... Pathways to the presidency get very, very tiny. So those are things that Biden has to look at as well. And honestly, this map shows us that Biden has a lot of safe states or states that are almost like more in the super likely column, which is very good for them because at this point, the more reassurance they can get, the more they would um probably like be they're they're not gonna rely as much on states like um Florida in the future to win. Because 
honestly, the map, how it looks right now, Biden just really needs to win the Rust Belt. That's it. Would it be like a slimmer margin of victory than possible? Of course. But again, looking at the basics to win, Biden right now is better off. And looking at the map, we can tell that. So that was the map. And then last um, last two graphs we're going to see is kind of like the modified poll numbers. Like what, 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 what do they project for the popular vote? So right now they're projecting that about it would be like about a 10 point difference, a little bit less now. Donald Trump has consistently gone up by election day or getting closer to election day. He he's gone up in the last week or so, um, about one and a half percent, which is substantial. And Biden has gone down a little bit as well. So the margin is closing to where now you have a difference of um about seven percent in the popular vote, more like eight percent almost, which again. Losing the popular vote is not important just because of how the election is um, set up. I mean, I think that's one of the big flaws or gains about the Electoral College, how, however you look at it. If you lose a popular vote, but you win the presidency, you still won the presidency. I mean, honestly, at this point, the Electoral College heavily favors the Republicans. Not like the map currently, but... Just the way it's set up, the system helps the Republicans. So that's very interesting because I think it's pretty, pretty much like... Um, looking at 2016 numbers, there's more Democrats than Republicans that voted at least in the last election. But when it comes to popular vote, they expect it to be somewhere similar where this is um, tightened up a little bit. But they, they honestly say that the chances of Donald Trump winning the popular vote are low. And honestly, looking at the latest margins or poll, polling numbers nationwide, we're still seeing those eight, nine, six, eight, six point margins at this point for. Um, for Donald or for Joe Biden, which is substantial margins, even in some of the more Republican polls, which usually don't take that many um, nationwide polls. I think the closest I've seen is like six percent, which I think honestly at this point could be a little bit less, could be a little more. However, right now there's many different things that are impacting the nationwide vote, and at the nationwide vote, here's the thing: it realistically doesn't have to do anything because. It's, it's all about the Electoral College, as we've learned in the past. So, now the last map I just wanted to show you guys quickly, which is um, what states are, like, correlate the most with each other. So, for example, they, they have, like, kind of the same voting groups. They don't necessarily vote for the same people. It's just that they have, like, similar ideals and stuff like that. So, just looking at some of the key swing states. States like Pennsylvania, very similar to other states in the Midwest. States like Florida... Pretty similar to some other states like Arizona or Pennsylvania. States like North Carolina, very similar to states like South Carolina and most of the states in the southern part of the, of the country. And honestly, at this point, this map is not that crucial, I guess, to see who's going to win. However, one thing that I can definitely tell you right now is that this election um, probably will have to do somewhat with this map. Because at this point, it's probably going to divide into a little bit more of like... The urban voters um, against the rural voters and the suburban voters in the middle. So it's going to be crucial. Not too much of important data, but it's still very crucial. So overall, that is all the, the data we have from the Economist presidential forecast between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I mean, this forecast was off by a couple states in 2016. And at the end of the day, this um, this forecast is data. They they just present it in another way, and they go and run um and a, a, a forecast on what they think they happen with the data they do have. So overall, I mean, pretty good forecast. And we're seeing the current state of the election is heavily favoring Biden. However, Donald Trump is not that far behind, or at least not as far behind as many people have thought, or maybe he was a couple weeks ago. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye.